off so you can actually hear me. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, some of you were here this morning, and it's good to see you back. Others of you are here for the very first time. And so we just extend a warm welcome as together um, we join with congregations around the world in celebrating uh, the sacrifice of Jesus and his res resurrection again on Sunday morning. Um, for those that were there this morning, um, I have an update for you. For those who are new here, uh, one of the longtime members of our congregation, Neil Pestis, um, uh, broke his leg, and when they were doing surgery, his heart stopped beating, or his blood pressure dropped, or something. I'm not clear on everything. But his son just called me a few moments before our program started this afternoon, and uh, said he's in a private room, out of intensive care unit. Um, he's off the ventilator, he's talking with his family. Things are looking up. They hope to uh, get him up uh, tomorrow and then in rehab soon. So for those of you that know Neil Pestis, that's good news. Um, we also want to extend a special invitation. We have a number of these out in our foyer. 
um, for another concert that's coming up here on uh, the 25th of April. It's the Asante Children's Choir. Um, and if you don't have this invitation, please pick one up. If you've been to uh, one of their concerts, you'll want to invite your friends and neighbors to come. It's a very active, um, high-energy uh, performance by kids that uh, live in Rwanda, Burundi, in Africa. Most of the kids that come are orphan children. They come over and uh, headquarter in the Portland area and then travel all over the West um, uh, performing for church groups and schools and things like that. So you'll want to be back for that. Let's um, turn our hearts toward Jesus for just a moment as we pray. Our Father in heaven, um, this afternoon our hearts are filled with, with your praise and gratitude for what you have done. We thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the promise that is contained within that sacrifice, that we um, can share eternity together with one another and with you, our Creator. Uh, we ask your presence and your blessing as we join our hearts in praising you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. They don't make crosses like they used to. Today we see them everywhere. Architectural adornments, centerpieces of astounding works of art, and ornate, solid gold items of jewelry. But it wasn't always this way. The elegant, pristine crosses we see today bear little resemblance to the shameful, rough-hewn, blood-soaked symbols of persecution, torture, and death they originally were created to be. You have to wonder, have we lost the essence of what the cross really is? Jesus, Jesus made an astounding claim in Luke 4 when he proclaimed that he was the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. It was more than a resume of credentials. It was a mission statement. In fact, it was a commitment to you and to me that there would be a place where sinners can find mercy, the afflicted can find healing, the broken can find compassion, and the outcast can find dignity. The process would not be pretty or even fully understood, but the process would contain a promise. It would last. Him to death pursue. 
There is a place where good news is preached to the poor. A place where the brokenhearted are bound up. There is a place of freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. There is a place where those who mourn are comforted, where a spirit of despair is exchanged for a garment of praise, a place where you can hear it proclaimed to all the world, this is the year of the Lord's favor. And in coming to this place, we find that our longing for purpose causes us to stumble upon ancient truths only to discover that they are timeless. Yes, there is a place where love and mercy meet. Behold the cross of Christ.
It stands alone on history's timeline, marking the fulfillment of the law and the advent of grace. Tragic, absurd, radical, this world has both adored and despised it, embraced and shunned it. But the events that occurred on a hill called Calvary, events that surrounded the very cross of Christ, all cry out, here is the Savior of the world. No depth of sin is deeper than his mercy. No history of depravity is longer than his record of grace. And though we'll never understand it, somehow in his presence and by his touch, every pauper becomes royalty and every sinner a saint. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. The Christ who was slain on that cross has the power to change lives today. Oh, for he changed me completely. A new life is mine. That is why by the cross I will stay.
The cross of Christ knows no race or gender. It doesn't see economic wealth or poverty, and it doesn't recognize status or prestige. Yet the cross of Christ is the dividing point of history and the unifying event of eternity. It's there that our differences disappear because our need draws us together. And we come to the cross as beggars, each of us owing a debt we could never repay, looking to him who took on himself what he did not owe. At the cross we are known and nothing is hidden. We come not because of our rights, but because of our, our poverty. At the cross he was forsaken. At the cross we are accepted. Worthy is the lamb who was slain.
an instrument of death for him, became a symbol of life for us. He was lifted up, and we are bowed down. He was made a prisoner of the nails. We are made free by his wounds. You remember the story. On Sunday, Jesus entered Jerusalem, accompanied by crowds hailing him as the Messiah, the promised deliverer of Israel. Behold the man. Later that week, in an upper room, he gathered his disciples for a final meal, celebrating the Passover. From there to Gethsemane, a quiet garden where he instructed his followers to watch and to pray. It was there he cried out to his father for this cup, this shameful cup of death, to be taken from him. Behold, the man. Suddenly, his praying was interrupted as a large crowd from the chief priests and elders of the people, together with Judas, burst into the garden and arrested Jesus. Subjected to a mock trial, he was sentenced to a cruel death by crucifixion. Behold the man. It was there that the Son of God was nailed to a tree, sacrificed for the sin of the world. Behold. Then he was buried, alone and forsaken, in a borrowed tomb, and a large stone was rolled in place at the entrance, sealing the sepulcher. Behold the man. But three days later, a new proclamation was issued. The voice of death had been silenced and the fear of the grave had been erased. Behold the empty tomb. was dawn on the first day of the week when the two women went to look at the tomb. An angel came and rolled the stone away. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven. Let every heart be glad And going to the tomb, he rolled back the stone and sat on it. Jesus lives again. Behold the empty tomb, oh come and see. And the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. From fear of death he set his people free. For I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He
he is not here. He is risen, just as he said. God has promised since the Old Testament days that he would redeem his people. He sent his son who died and was raised to life so that people could be forgiven. But was the resurrection the end of the promise? No. Jesus has promised to come again. He saw a new heaven and a new earth. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. I am making everything new. All this world's destruction and brokenness will give way to the promise of a new creation. We will praise the glory and holiness of God himself forever. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed The victory is won He is risen from the dead And I will rise When He calls my name No more sorrow no more pain, I will rise on eagle's wings Before my God, fall on my knees and rise I will rise
Jesus has overcome, and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory is won. He is risen from the dead, and I will rise. In a world desperately seeking answers and frantically longing for the truth, a world defined by shallow promises and counterfeit hope, Jesus offers healing for the broken, release for the captives, joy for those who mourn, mercy to the sinner, love and healing to the afflicted, compassion to the broken, and dignity to the outcast. Shelter to the homeless and purpose to the wanderer, reason to the meaningless and fruit to the barren. Food for the hungry, water for the thirsty, strength for the weary, hope for the hopeless, and freedom for the bound. He defends the weak and rescues the abused. He delivers the captive and forgives the sinner. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. He knows your name. Oh 
all together now.
Amen. Thank you so much for joining us as we celebrate the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The night that Jesus was crucified by one of his best friends, he told his followers that because I live, you will live also. And that's our hope, that's our confession today, that though we live in a world marked by death, in Christ we have life. And we don't think of life in just terms of longevity of years, but we think of it as the quality that Jesus Christ brings to our life on a daily basis. Jesus said that his mission was to give life and life more abundantly. And it's our, our great passion and desire here at the Hoodview Church that you would experience that life that Jesus can give each day. Um, we have two opportunities that we'd like to extend to you as, as friends um, to, to learn more about Jesus and to uh, grow in your experience with him. Uh, we have small groups that meet here each Saturday at 10 a.m. And we're studying through the book of Luke. So we're learning more about Jesus and we'd be honored if you would be interested in joining us for that. And so there's a resource table out in the lobby as soon as you exit the sanctuary here. And uh, there are free study guides available, and it's, there's a little slip of paper that will give you information as to how you can investigate or look into being a part of one of those small groups if you'd be interested in that. And we also have a really awesome online Bible study course that would be great for someone that's just learning about God and Jesus or for someone that's, that's had a relationship with God for some time but would like to learn more uh, it's a really awesome resource. It's engaging and, and Christ-centered. And so we'd love for you just to write down your email address and your name, and we'll shoot you a link so you can get started on that. I think you'll be really blessed by that and enthusiastic about it. So those are two options we'd like to extend to you. Thank you so much for taking the time to share with us this afternoon, and uh, let's pray together. Father in heaven, we're really just in awe of what you've done for us in, in giving your Son to die in our place, and to live now on our behalf. And so, Jesus, we, we surrender our lives to you gladly because you surrendered your life for us. We pray that you'd fill us with your Spirit and uh, that you would minister to us today as we think about all that you've done for us. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Thanks again for joining us. We'd, we'd really like it if you'd stick around and help us eat all the cookies and uh, drink the refreshments that we have. And if you don't, uh, we'll, we'll be really upset as we overeat, so <laughs> please join us.